Hi, welcome to Wise Guys. Today we're going to be talking about changing units and using conversion factors. When we're working with numbers in, in uh, mathematical work, we have to pay as much attention to our units as we do to our numbers. A lot of times when we're working through calculations we drop units, but it really is important to keep them with you when you're working through the questions. Now, if we need to change units, if we need to go from, for example, centimeters to inches, we use something called a conversion factor. And here I'm just going to talk about it by focusing only on the units. If we have a number that is in centimeters <coughs> and we want to change it to inches, we start with our centimeters, we multiply it by a relationship that we know between inches and centimeters, so we multiply it by the units of inches divided by centimeters. That gives us centimeters times inches, centimeters times inches, divided by centimeters. Our centimeters will cancel and we'll be left with the units of inches, which is what we're looking for. Now, again, as I've already said, we use conversion factors to change units. We know, for example, that one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. These are equal quantities. And we're, when we're dividing two equal quantities, the quotient is one. So we know, for example, that if we take 4 and divide it by 4, that equals 1. The same holds true for these two quantities, which equal one another. Essentially, when we multiply a number by 2.54 centimeters over 1 inch, we're essentially multiplying that number by 1, because these two quantities equal one another. Now, we could set up these two equal quantities as 2.54 centimeters per one inch, or we could set it up as one inch over 2.54 centimeters. They both hold true because they equal one another. And these two um, mathematical statements here are conversion factors, 2.54 centimeters per one inch and one inch over 2.54 centimeters. These are conversion factors and that's what we use to change units. <coughs> so as I've already mentioned, when we're multiplying by one, a quantity doesn't change. And when we use conversion factors, only the units change. So let's work through an example here. We're going to change 8 inches 2 centimeters. So here we have on our ruler, the ruler which is a little bent, 8 inches right at this point. And we're going to see what it is in centimeters. So we take 8 inches and multiply it by our conversion factor. We know that 2.54 centimeters equals one inch. This is the, the relationship that we're using. So we set it up so we have 2.54 centimeters divided by one inch. In that situation we have the inch on the denominator because we want our inches to cancel. So when we multiply this, because this is a fraction times a fraction, don't forget this is eight inches over one, we end up with 8 inches times 2.54 centimeters divided by 1 inch. Our inches cancel, and we're left with the final unit of centimeters. We take 8, multiply it by 2.54, and we get 20.32. Now if we take a look at our ruler, it's a little hard to see that we have a number 20 down here. If we just run this line down here, and again, as I said, the ruler is a little bent. We come to 20, approximately 20.3 centimeters. So as you can see, 8 inches does in fact equal 20.32 centimeters. They are the same length.
All we've done is change the units. Now, one of the things that seems confusing, <clears throat> sorry, one of the things that seems confusing is picking the conversion factor that works. Now these relationships are all linear relationships. So as you can see, there's a pile of them. There's a lot. I certainly don't want to have to memorize all those things, and I doubt that you do as well. <clears throat> it's not too bad if your instructor has given you all these relationships, then you can use these conversion factors. However, if you're not given them, you're going to only pick maybe two or three of them, maybe five at most, to actually know and remember. One of the ones I use is one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. I know that one. You might want to remember this one if you're using big quantities. One kilometer equals 0 0.6213 miles. And something we do use depending on the area we're in is imperial units. So here we have 12 inches equals one foot. It's usually a good idea to remember that. Most of the other stuff, the squared stuff, I would probably not be memorizing that or dealing with that. I'd work through it in a different way, which I'll show you in a later video. So again, only pick two or three of these to memorize. Let's work on some examples. Here we have 30 centimeters and we're going to change it to inches. And we're using the, the relationship of 2.54 centimeters equals one inch. So I start with my 30 centimeters and I'm going to set it up with centimeters in the denominator and inches in the numerator and the reason for that is I want inches in my answer. Now I know that the relationship is 2.54 centimeters 2.54 centimeters for one inch. So I put my one up here with my inches and my 2.54 down here with my centimeters. This equals, now what happens here is that my centimeters will cancel and I end up with 30 times one inch divided by 2.54. Take out my calculator we have 30 times 1 divided by 2.54 equals 11.8 inches. Now I'm not paying too much attention to sig figs here. You can see here that I only have one sig fig and three sig figs. My answer should probably only have one sig fig, but I'm not paying attention to that right now. Next one we're working on 17 gallons change to liters. So what do we start with? We start with what we know. 17 gallons. And what are we changing it to? We're changing it to liters. So we want a relationship between gallons and liters. I'm going to set this up so my gallons are in the denominator so they cancel and that liters are in the numerator because that's what I want in my answer. I know that the relationship between gallons and liters is one gallon for 4.54 liters. My gallons will cancel and I'm left with the units of liters. Back to the calculator, I have 17 times 4.54 equals 77.18, so I'm going to go with 77.2 liters. Next example, oh, wait, here's some questions for you to try. So you can pause this video, take a few minutes to write down these questions and work through them, and then you can start the video again and I will have the solutions. Here we are changing two kilometers to meters. I'm going to start with two kilometers and I'm going to multiply it by a conversion factor that has kilometers in the denominator and meters in the numerator. 
I can see that the relationship is one kilometer equals a thousand meters. So one kilometer, one thousand meters. My kilometers cancel. I'm not even going to use the calculator for this one. Two times a thousand divided by one gives me two thousand. And you can see that the units I'm left with is meters, which is what I want. Next question. I'm going to start with 9.375 inches. 9.375 inches. And I'm multiplying it by a conversion factor that has inches in the denominator and centimeters in the numerator because that's what I'm trying to get to. I see here the relationship between inches and centimeters. So I put one inch in the denominator and 2.54 centimeters in the numerator. My inches cancel. Take out my calculator. 9.375 times 2.54. 9.375 times 2.54 and then divided by 1, which of course gives us the same answer. And we end up with 23.8. 23.8 centimeters. Now again, in this situation I have paid attention to sig figs. I have four sig figs here and three here, so we would have three sig figs in our answer. Okay. 0 0.65 hours to 2 seconds. Again, we're starting with 0 0.65 hours, and I'm going to multiply it with the conversion factor that has hours in the denominator and seconds in the numerator. I look for the relationship. We have one hour equals 3,600 seconds. So one hour equals 3,600 seconds. My hours cancel. And then I go to my calculator and take 0 0.65 and multiply it by 3600. Twenty three forty seconds. One of the things that's important when you're working on mathematical questions is just to stop and ask yourself if your answer makes sense. It's always important, truthfully, to do that practically with every question as you go along. So here we know that in one hour there's 3600 seconds. We know that 0 0.65 is, is sort of around half, not quite, but we don't have to be exact here. It's about half of an hour. And we know that half of 3600 is 1800. So then we look at this answer and go, okay, this is a little bit more than half. This is a little bit more than 1800 that's a reasonable answer. It's always a good idea to just stop and go, does that answer make sense? If you had come up with an answer of 12,340, you could say, oh, you know what? That doesn't make sense. All right, last question. Five gallons, and we're changing it to liters. So I'm going to put gallons in the denominator, and liters in the numerator. What's my relationship? 4.54 liters equals one gallon. So 4.54 liters equals one gallon. My gallons cancel and I'm left with the units of liters. I take my five, multiply it by the 4.54 and divide it by one. So five times 4.54 equals 22.7 22.7 liters. Now again, it's always a good idea, as I said before, to check, does that answer make sense? We have 5 multiplied by around 4, a little bit more than 4. 5 times 4 is 20. This one's a little bit more than 20. That's a perfectly reasonable answer. This is a 2, although it doesn't look like it. Have a good day, and that was a Wise Guys production.